All right, well, thank you everybody for coming. I think we're going to get started. Um, There's a beautiful branch. They really set it up nice. Um, so, my name's Jeremy. I'm the founder of Goldback Inc. Uh, I'm going to go over a little bit of some of the history of Goldback, uh, some of the history of the company, some of kind of the early challenges and hurdles that we've had. Um, you know, we'll talk a little bit about um, you know why why goldbacks. You know what what problem we're really trying to solve, and and uh, yeah, I hope I hope that'll be fun for everybody. So um, some background for me: I have been just really excited about uh, precious metals for a long time. It's been a passion of mine um, since I was about 21 years old. I was actually a delegate for a politician named Ron Paul back in 2011. And he put out a lot of content, a lot of kind of liberty-oriented content. And one of the things that he talked about a lot was this idea of sound money. And he talked a lot about inflation. And you know, I really got captured in that, in that I wanted to, I wanted to use sound money. So you know, I went out and I was just young. I, I bought a bunch of silver and I'd i go to the farmers markets and I'd barter with it, you know, and try and convince people to you know take my silver and trade. And I I found pretty quick that um, you know some of the older designs on junk silver did better because people, you know, they wanted something that was a little bit novel too when you. Did trade so that's anyway that's some of my background. Um, you know, a few years later, I ended up working with Larry and Robin, who's here uh, for the United Precious Metals Association. And Larry's goal was to, and you guys probably want these other seminars. He wanted to really make an organization that was all about spending and using gold and silver as money, right? Um, if you go to if you go to buy gold or silver at most coin stores or online bullion retailers, the 40-year-old sales pitch for gold and silver is, hey, you know, inflation's out there and you know the dollar could collapse. It's you know, it's inevitable, it's already long in the tooth. And when that happens, you should own something that really has some true value, right? Um, Mike Maloney is one of the guys that I used to follow. He did, a, he did a really great series called The Hidden Secrets of Money, and that was his thesis. It was, the dollar's doomed to fail because it's not backed by anything now, and you really ought to own some gold so when the dollar fails, you still have some value. And then you can trade into whatever the new system is. And then he says, well, I don't know what the new system is. It'll probably be made by the same yahoos who made the last system. But at least you dodged, you know, the crash, right? And thinking about it in that context, it kind of made me think of gold coins or silver coins as a bunker for your wealth, right? You might put your food storage in your bunker, you put yourself in your bunker, the bombs drop and then you come out. But you don't live in your bunker year round, you know? You don't, you don't find a real estate agent and, you know, shop for a plot of land with a bunker. You know, you want to live in a house. And really, the, the problem that we find with gold and silver coins is that while they might be a bunker for your wealth, they're not a system. You know, nobody, nobody's going up and down the street and you know, spending gold and silver coins. Uh, and there's issues. There's, there's reasons why. Um, for starters, our markets are getting flooded with fake gold coins and fake silver coins. Even if you want to trade with somebody that you know, would accept gold or silver, you don't even know if it's real gold or silver. There's a high probability that it's not, it's not the real stuff, all right? So you have to have an expensive tester, you have to really be savvy and know what you're doing. And that's just one of the barriers. Another barrier to using gold or silver as money, and we've, we've been trying to get people to do this for a long time, is, you know, gold coin is $2,000. You know, how many, how many $2,000 transactions do you do? You know, and by the way, if you want to make change for a gold coin, 10 tenth ounce coins does not equal a gold coin because they all have different values and premiums and they're not interchangeable, even assuming that you could be sure that all of them are real. So 
you know, there's reasons why people aren't using gold and silver coins today as money. And it's not because they don't have the properties of money. It's not because they aren't inflation proof. It's just they're not really conveniently designed to be used as money because of counterfeiting and because of the denominations that they're in. And those are the two main problems that we really wanted to solve with gold back. Um, let's see here. So I met Adam Trexler, he's the president of Valorum, when I was doing a project called Quintric. And Quintric was about taking an ounce of gold, so we're gonna vault all these gold coins, and you could own a piece of a gold digitally. That was one way to split gold. That was our first attempt at splitting gold. We're gonna digitally split it into a thousand pieces, and you could trade with gold that was in a vault somewhere else. And I thought this was really slick, and we said, hey, you know, we're gonna put a camera up, there's gonna be a blockchain, the blockchain is gonna tell you exactly how much gold should be in the vault, and we will show you on the live stream camera exactly how much gold is in the vault, and you'll know that the gold is in the vault. No one's ever done this. I was really proud of it. And I'd go to conferences and I'd tell people all about this. Hey, we solved, we made a, a, a better gold standard with cryptocurrency. This is, this is in 2018. So this is when gold crypto companies were really new. There was only maybe three of them in the country. Um, this is, you know, before crypto got really, really big. And what people came up to me and they told me is they said, you know, Jeremy, that's great that you think that you have the solution. That's great that you want to, you know, get people spending gold. And I, I love gold and I, believe me, I would spend gold and I would use your system. And it's not that I don't trust you and it's not that I don't trust that all the gold in the live stream is really gold coins and that they're not fake and that, you know, the whole thing's authentic. I, I believe you. I don't trust the government. That's what they told me. I don't trust the government. And that's why I don't want to, you know, use your gold cryptocurrency. Because if you guys hit a certain level of success, they're gonna roll right through your wall with a tank and they're gonna take all your gold coins. And then my tokens won't be worth anything. And I thought, you know, well, what do you say to that? You know, <laughs> like, no they won't, you know, <laughs> so, you know. And then, you know, I heard some variation of, well, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And I heard this probably, you know, two or 300 times. So I'm going to these conferences, I'm trying to get, you know, this cryptocurrency be a success. And I met this company called Valorum, and this is what they were selling. In fact, this is the first, they call it an Orum, this is the first one that I ever bought from them. I thought, hey, you know, that's kind of a slick product. You know, that's really cool. And, you know, we didn't, I didn't get it right away. You know, it's like, that's really cool. That could probably be used as money, but it didn't click how. And, we have some great music here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, it didn't really click how until about a year later. I had this dream, and I thought, you know, I, I was dreaming, and you know, there's this, there's like this farmers market, you know, and people were trading with these things. You know, they were trading with them, and they were trading with, you know, big ones. They were getting their grocery, and they're getting like smaller ones back. And the whole thing was just gold. Like there was multi-denominations of this. And I woke up and I thought, well, how small can we go? You know, like, you know, and the technology hadn't existed until a month prior. Oh, you'd probably just go. You'd probably just go here on the volume. There you go. Um, the technology hadn't existed until a month prior to go as small as a thousandth of an ounce. So this technology just didn't exist. I mean, vacuum deposition technology hadn't existed until right when it needed to, to do this project. Nobody anywhere in the world could have made a gold back up until, you know, April, May of 2019. And to give you an idea of what vacuum deposition technology is all about, vacuum deposition technology is the same tech that puts gold in your cell phone. It puts it in your laptop, it puts it in the computer chips in your car, it puts it in diabetic test strips. Uh, Taiwan uses it to you know, manufacture supercomputer chips. Vacuum deposition is a deep space vacuum the size of this room where you have three 50 pound slates of gold getting hit with plasma 
as Polymer rolls through. It's as sophisticated and as high tech as you can get. Goldback is the only mass produced bullion product using this technology in the world. It is absolutely state of the art. And because of that, because it's so sophisticated, the bar is so high in terms of, you know, you need decades of expertise. You need, you know, $10 million worth of equipment. There's no counterfeit gold backs. If you want to counterfeit, you can get coins, you can get $30,000 worth of minting equipment, and you can start making fake gold coins tomorrow, and every single one that you pass off is a $2,000 payday. You know, counterfeiters are losers. These are not smart people. These are not good people. These are not hardworking people. If you're a counterfeiter, you're looking for the quick buck. If you were honest, if you had any talent at all, you'd run your own business, right? These people aren't making gold backs, right? The bar is too high. And then you have to do it profitably if you're gonna make a fake gold back. You know, our manufacturer to this day still loses money making the one gold back. It is expensive to make these things. Anyway, so, so I, I talked to Adam Trexler and you know, we figure out that we can do a one and it started out as a lot smaller and we kept bullying him and making it bigger and bigger and we convinced him that he could lose money on it. And you know, I had to, I had to go out and I realized, you know, to get my first order into Valorum, and that's our manufacturing company, we had to have two million dollars to make all the gold backs. Now, as a young entrepreneur, as my late 20s, I think I was 28 years old, I didn't have two million dollars. You know, I don't know any 28-year-old that does. Maybe somebody does. Um, you know, and as an entrepreneur, you have a couple choices. You can raise equity. You can say, hey, you know, you can own half of my company in exchange for $2 million. Well, when you have an idea and you don't even have a name for your product, your company's not worth $4 million. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, it's not. I mean, maybe, maybe if you have the track history, you know, as a 28-year-old, I didn't. So I couldn't raise it as equity. And I thought, well, gee, you know, like that's, that's a bit of a problem. Well, I could go to the bank and I could borrow it. You know, I can go up to the bank and say, hey, I make $60,000 a year, but I got this amazing idea. I'm going to make a gold currency so people don't have to use your product. <laughs> <laughs> Could you lend me some of your products so I can make my product? You're my competitor. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, on its face, I, I don't think they would have gave it to me. So, you know, I, I thought about it a little bit. And you know, working at Alpine Gold, working you know, for the United Precious Metals Association, we had a business model where we were vaulting about $40 million worth of coins. And this is how the business model works. You know, we take these coins and we say, hey, you know what? You've got a lot of money and you probably don't want these coins in your house because if somebody robs your house while you're on vacation, those coins are no longer there. Tell you what, we have a U2 rated safe, a vault, that would take somebody three hours to get into with an oxygen torch, all right? Police response time's five minutes, you know? That's protected by men with guns and is insured. Now all this costs money, so you should buy coins from us and put that into our safe and we will charge you a small vaulting fee. That was our model. And it was a working model. We had tens of millions of dollars worth of gold. My thought was, hey, you know what? All these people are protecting their wealth. All these people are paying vaulting fees. I need to get $2 million worth of gold. What if we took these gold coins, converted them into this form of gold, and then we paid people interest, right? So if this is a 50, it was a 50 gold back. For every 50 that you have, at the end of the year, we'll add one gold back to the top and you have an ever growing pile of gold. That was the gold lease program and it was used to meet that inventory need at the very beginning, right? And, you know, lucky enough, there were people there that, you know, customers, I didn't have that great of a pitch. It was, hey, I've got this idea. I'm gonna turn it into this product that kind of looks like, you know, this and, you know, I'm just gonna take all your gold and turn it into these, and this is what you'll have, and I'll pay you 2%. And I think the reason why the people did it initially, you know, it wasn't about the 2%, I think they just wanted to see the project happen. You know, I think they just wanted to see the gold back happen, they wanted sound money to happen, and they said, hey, you know what? 
I'm paying vaulting fees right now, 2%, and free vaulting is a great deal. So I got my cycling inventory. And I'm really grateful to those people that have done that. They've done very well. They bought their initial goldbacks. The initial leases we sold in 2019, those goldbacks were sold at $2. They're $4 now. Oh, and, you know, it's been a few years, so, you know, we've added, we've added quite a few more goldbacks. So not only is their gold worth more, and now they have more of it. Whereas everybody else that stuck with the coins, coins in the last four years actually didn't go up in price as much as goldbacks have. They've gone up in gold price slower. And I probably have to eat a chunk off of one of these because they're chocolate, right? But they have less gold because they've been paying vaulting fees. You know, so who did better, you know? So it worked out for everybody. We've, since the, that time, expanded the gold back lease pool to, I want to say there's like between 16 and 19 million dollars in that program. And we cycle it all the time, you know, because we're constantly selling gold backs. We're able to sell a lot more gold backs because people are giving us the inventory that we need so we can cycle it and we can get more gold backs to more people. And in exchange for that, you know, the use of those funds, we can pay a return. And we cut the banks out of the whole thing. Because you could go to the bank and, you know, you'll sit down with an expert and they'll say, hey, you know, it'll be some 20 year old, and they'll say, hey, you really ought to be responsible with your money. We can put it into a CD and make you 4%. Well, inflation's 15%. So if you do that, you're only losing 11. How does that work for you? And then I go to the same bank and I say, hey, I want to borrow some money. And they say, great, we'll lend it to you for 12%. I say, okay. <laughs> inflation's 15, so, <laughs> you know, it's probably not a bad deal, but. You know, we completely cut the banks out as a middleman in this transaction with inventory. And that's been a great deal, not only for our users and for our members, but for everybody that owns gold backs. Um, do you guys want me to touch on, um, well, I'll back up here. You know, there's, there's two main advantages to the gold back. You know, the first is that and I touched on this already, nobody's ever faked one of these. There's no fake gold backs out there. You can have confidence that if you're going to spend these, that it's the real deal. Uh, the second benefit to gold backs is that they're interchangeable. So if you've got a 50, you can turn in a 50 for 10 fives or 50 ones or five tens, I can work my fractions, two 25s. They're all interchangeable at the same premium. So these spend just like cash. This isn't about hiding your money in a bunker. This is about divorcing yourself one step at a time from the dollar so you don't have to use dollars anymore. And I'll tell you guys, there are people today in Utah that run most of their transactions on gold. They're already stepping away from the dollar. And, you know, with the dollar losing value as fast as it is, is what, you know, what other choice is there? You know, you can continue to lose 15% in anything that you have in dollars, or you can take all your dollars and invest in the stock market, or you can take all your dollars and invest in real estate. And people are so worried about what's happening in the dollar, that's what people are starting to do. And what has that done for real estate? What has that done to the stock market? Everything's super expensive now. You know, any, any commodity, you know, like we have more and more dollars chasing fewer and fewer goods. And that's what inflation really is, but now nobody has savings. You know, and if inflation really ramps up, which it could, you know, it's like there's countries where you have to get your paycheck and you have to spend it before the end of the day because by the next day it's worth half as much. The dollar's made out of the same stuff. It's paper or linen or cotton or I don't know what it's made out of. It's not made out of gold. <laughs> so, you know, it's really, that's, that's, what, that's what people are doing with gold backs. They're, they're entirely avoiding dollars altogether. And you know, we've seen a few things happening with gold backs that are really special. You know, first off, um, I'll tell you this guy, I'll tell you this story to you guys. The former treasurer or the former secretary of the US Mint, when he came in 
he's on the board for Valorum, he's on the advisory board for them now. It's a manufacturing company. When he came in about 10 years ago, they told him that their goal was to only lose a quarter million customers every year. Now that's a little weird, right, you know? Because most businesses you want to gain customers, right? You want to expand your market share. And the U.S. Mint creates all the U.S. minted gold eagles, the gold buffaloes. They're the biggest, they're the biggest game in town in terms of, you know, selling coins. And the reason why their goal is to only lose a quarter million customer is because the generation that's really tied to sound money that understands gold and silver, they're aging out. And the new people, the younger people, the you know, Gen X, the millennials, are not buying gold coins in anywhere near the same numbers that the silent generation or the baby boomers are. So that's how you get a shrinking pool. Quarter million people a year shrinking. And you have only have you know, a few percent of Americans that own gold coins to begin with. Well, how many young people can afford a $2,000 gold coin anyway? You know, it's, it's a real problem. It's a shrinking space. In Utah, in the last 15 years, we've lost half of our coin stores. You can see it here. And sometimes that's their retiring, but also, again, it's a shrinking space. You know, it's, it's really too bad. Now, Goldbacks, we've been out for four years, and what we're finding is that what people will do with Goldbacks is they'll buy them, they'll put them in a wallet, if you don't have a gold back wallet, I recommend you get one. They're not very expensive. So you get a gold back wallet. And the nice thing about a gold back wallet, if it's everything else that you have, you can spend gold backs wherever you go. About half of small business owners will take gold backs as payment. Your chiropractor, your dentist, you know, any anytime you're talking to the business owner directly, you get a 50-50 shot that they take gold backs. Which blew my mind, by the way. I thought it was gonna be like 10%. I thought that maybe we could get, you know, people that really understood to take gold backs. It's about half of small business owners, right? So opportunities to spend these come up all the time. I'm constantly draining out my wallet and refilling it. And every time I do that, I'm not using dollars. I'm just using gold. And I'm not only using gold, I'm putting gold into the hands of other people and I'm using it in my local community, right? So when people circulate gold backs, you know, that could look like, hey, I'm putting these in Christmas cards. I'm putting these in stockings, you know. I'm going to, you know, send a Christmas card to everybody in my neighborhood and stick in a one gold back. And people get really excited, you know, way more excited than if you stuck four bucks in there. I mean, if, if, you, if you stuck four dollars in a Christmas card to a kid, you know, you're going to get like an angry letter back, you know, like, you know, you send them a gold back, you know, this is like, you know, level 10 excitement, you know. You got a real piece of gold. You know, it's a very affordable gift. It's a, ve it's a lot of bang for your buck. And then you have an opportunity to educate that person. Hey, this is like as if I paid you cash, except this doesn't lose all of its value. How neat is that? You can own real gold, right? Now, and you look at this, and you look at how, you know, these things kind of suck you in. I think the reason why Goldback is, in part, that Goldback has been so successful and the acceptance of it, is there something really alluring about gold? You know, there's a reason why gold was used as money across cultures for thousands of years, and it's not just because it was rare, it's not just because it was scarce. There's lots of rare and scarce things. Other things can be divisible. I think the most underrated reason why gold has been used as money for thousands of years is because there's a natural allure to the beauty of gold. People are attracted to it. They see it and they want it. There's a reason why 40% of gold today is used in jewelry. They want to see it. You want to touch it. You want to be part of it. It's a very unique kind of thing to look at. And if you consider a gold coin, you know, on a one ounce gold coin, you can see a lot of gold. On a 10th ounce gold coin, you can see a very small amount of gold, and you go smaller than that, you can't see much, it's not very impressive anymore, right? A single gold back has nine times the surface area of a one ounce gold coin, while having a thousandth the amount of gold in it. It's very malleable. Now, 
this isn't the exact size of a gold coin. I don't, if you're trying to fit nine on here, you're probably not going to be able to do it. This is a chocolate coin. But that means that a single gold back, it's 9,000 times as alluring and as shiny. It shows 9,000 times the amount of gold per square inch for the amount of gold that it has as a one ounce gold coin. So all that emotional impact that gold has, all that weight that gold has been carrying for thousands of years is dramatically magnified in the gold back. And I think that's why half of business owners will take it. It's not that they know anything about gold. It's that when you show them something that's this beautiful and you just want $4 worth of goods from them, they're inclined to take it. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I, I, I remember going to Wendy's, you know, and I'll, I'll offer gold backs even though I know they won't take them, you know, because I like showing them off and then you become the center of attention and everyone's huddling over and you're explaining why their money's bad and, you know, why you got the special thing and it's, it's a fun time wherever you go. Um, highly recommend it. But I was at Wendy's and I offered them. I said, yeah, I'll pay you, you know, I don't know what it was, two or three gold backs for my order. And they said, you know, and they said, well, I don't know if we take those. Well, oh, that's too bad because these are real gold. They are, you know, I'm talking to them about it. I said, okay, I'll tell you what, Wendy's probably won't take your gold backs. I'll take your gold backs. I'll pay for your order. And the cashier took out his wallet, paid for my order, and took my gold backs. Now tell me that's not a great money, right? You know, one of the important properties of money is that people want it. Right? And the secret for gold backs is they're gold. Right? And gold's really special. It's not so much that it's a gold back, it's people are inclined to take gold. People like gold. So, anyway, director, US Mint says we're losing a quarter million customers a year. We're losing a quarter million customers a year. When people buy gold backs, we've seen so much evidence of people circulating these, you know, giving these to their kids, their grandkids, um, you know, tipping with them at restaurants, bartering with them, garage sales, farmers markets. You know, when people get gold backs, they tend to move around quite a bit. And based off how many gold backs we made, our low ball estimate for how many people that own gold backs is about a million people. We had a separate company come to Utah, they're doing market research, they're setting up gold back ATMs. Those are coming out next month, by the way. Gold back ATMs, they're gonna be around, you'll see them. We'll talk about them more. In their market research for Utah, they found that half of the people in Utah have heard of gold backs. We're not even trying in Utah. You've never seen a gold back billboard here. You know, we've done some radio ads. We're not, we're barely trying in Utah. And half of people have heard of these and it's because people get these and they can't help but show everybody. Look what I got, you know, on average, if people get a product they're excited about, they'll show 10 other people. So if you say, well, a million people own gold backs, maybe 10 million people have seen them. I know that you know, a lot of our politicians own gold backs, just about everybody in the House of Representatives for Utah, just about everyone in Congress that you can think of are, has seen and has handled or owns gold backs. These things move around. People get excited, they share it with others. And almost all of the growth in gold back has been grassroots. We've been selling tens of millions of dollars worth of gold backs, and we've, we've spent, you know, in the, first, in the first three years of the company, we sold about $40 million worth of gold backs, and we had spent under $100,000 in marketing. And it's because people are just showing each other. They can't even help it. And we didn't even want people to do that. Well, we kind of did, but we didn't, we didn't want it to go too fast because we were limited in how many of these things we could make. And it's getting a lot better now. We can produce gold backs a lot faster, so we can finally start marketing. We can finally start telling people. In fact, we had a cartoon come out the other day all about gold backs. Have you guys seen that? Anyone see that? It's the Tuttle Twins episode. You know, they did a whole episode about gold backs and, you know, the importance of, you know, the gold standard and what we're trying to do and that this is the first form of gold that's easily divisible and usable for everyday purchases. Whereas before you had to have 100 copper pennies and a one silver dollar and 20 silver dollars was one gold piece. We can't do that anymore. We use our silver in our technology. We use our copper in our electrical wiring. We can't go back to copper, silver, gold. We have to use just gold and we can break it down and put it in vaults. But a lot of people, they want the privacy and the ability 
to have it in their hands. And nobody has been able to execute on delivering that in 2600. It's not a dying off generation, it's the future. And I think as we continue on years and years, we're gonna see that a greater percentage of people in the precious metal space own gold backs. I think gold backs will define the precious metal space within the next five to 10 years. So, you know, things that you can do to get involved, um, get a gold back wallet, you know, actually have gold backs on you. You'd be shocked at how many opportunities there are to give out gifts, tips, spend, you know, barter. Um, you can buy gold backs for $3.80. You can spend them for $4.10. Your credit card gives you 1% back, your gold back gives you 8% back. Every time you spend gold backs, you're getting a discount. And you're educating somebody about sound money. And they're happy to give you the discount, by the way. This isn't like some kind of trick. They would love to give a discount for people that pay in cash, that people that pay in gold, right? This is a private cash-like instrument, right? Um, so that's one thing that you can do. Something else that you can do is you can educate other people about it. Don't just have gold backs with you. Find people that you want to give gifts to. Find excuses, find reasons. If somebody does anything of you for value, this is a very novel thing. I was at, um, I was at a theme park in Orlando the other day and you know, I was watching the baby so my wife could go on the ride and I'm sitting in this little room kind of waiting for her to get off and she had a stinky diaper. I, okay, well I'll just check the diaper bag and there's no diapers. You know, and it's like, I can't, you know, I have to wait 30 minutes to get upset with my wife over that, but, you know, I looked next to the family next to me and they've got a kid, my kid's age. And I said, hey, you know, I started talking to them and I said, hey, you know, can I buy some diapers from you? I'll give you something really special. And I, well, what are you talking about? And I pulled out a gold back. What? Everybody in the room wanted to see it. What is that? I'll just give you the diapers. You don't have to give me that. The value perception of a gold back is much higher than $4. Because like, look at all this gold that they're seeing. They couldn't believe it. They gave me like eight diapers, you know? And then I had to like force the gold back on them. No, you have to have this. And you know, they're gonna show everybody. Look what I got. Look what I got at Universal Studios, you know? And then on and on they go, you know? And I'm educating them. Oh, well, you know, it's, you know, here in a, you know, where I come from, you know, we've got these gold backs and it's inflation proof money. They're made out of gold. We use them as money, and I would love to, it's only worth $4, I mean, calm down, but you know. Can I get a diaper, please? Opportunities come up all the time. So if you have gold backs on you, if you carry them in a wallet, um, you know, those are two things that you can do. Um, you know, as far as, you know, spreading them around, educating people, gold back is a, it is a sound money grassroots movement. If you live in Utah or any of the other gold back states, you can spend these at businesses that take gold backs. You can go across the street and you can buy merchandise. You know, we've got hundreds upon hundreds of businesses that take gold backs in Utah. They love it when gold backs come through their door. They're giving you an 8% discount. Remember, it's like, the, it's like the credit cards. They give you 1%, gold backs give you, you know, seven or eight. You know, you can get discounts shopping local. You know, keep the money in your community. You can sign up businesses where you know the business owner and they can take gold backs too. You can take gold backs at your own business. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do in terms of education, in terms of using them. This will protect your value. And the better you are at spending gold backs, the better you are at navigating it, the more protected you are from the downsides of the dollar. Because if you don't use gold backs, you're using dollars. Dollars lose 15% a year. That's kind of my low ball. It might be higher than that. They lose probably at least 15% a year. The official numbers, I think, are closer to 10% a year. So if you want to be protected from that, you know, the more you can use gold backs, the more you can protect yourself. Because again, we're not building a bunker, we're building a system. You know, and more and more folks are finding that. They, they own a lot of gold just in case. Well, your gold in a just in case scenario is gonna go right back to that coin store and you better hope they're open, you better hope the IRS isn't waiting right there to get you with windfall, whatever, you know, like, and then you gotta cash into central bank digital currencies. Then you gotta buy into whatever the new system is, which is probably worse than the old one. When you own gold coins, you're taking a break from inflation. When you own gold backs, you're divorcing inflation forever. So anyway, that's what I got. Thanks for, thanks for your guys' time.